ladies and gentlemen, today on our lovely dance talk, we have Yulia Musikina. She is US amateur uh, Latin champion, Black Bull amateur Latin champion, UK Open Latin champion, International Open Latin champion. I mean, you probably won every single competition there is. Uh, she was just recently guest on our fabulous ladies of Latin and did an awesome lecture, which leads me right away to the question, do you teach a lot online? I don't want to brag, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I, mean, I think it was bragging a bit. <laughs> yes, I do. I do teach quite a lot. Um, and I actually like it a lot. Right. I was very skeptical at the beginning when when the first lockdown started. I I heard that people are doing online things, so I wanted to try it out, and I tried with the, my trusted people, people has who has followed me for a long time, and I was actually surprised that it was very good. Okay, you so know. Is it mostly like one-on-one -on -one couples or is it like, uh, like what we did, like uh, camps or both? So we did pretty much everything. We did um, something that called Air Dance, which is a live stream um, group cl uh, the classes, which is pretty much a lecture that you give in front of the camera with no audience whatsoever. And it goes live. And then people watch it live and then they they watch the recorded uh, version of it. So we did that. We did few of the um, group classes, pretty much what we did with Juliana and Babette. And um, then the next one, we di I did a private lesson with Pro-Am. And I did few of the lessons of the couples online. Right. So I, I covered it all. <laughs> You're an expert in it by now. I That's know. awesome. I got to an expert, no, but definitely I re-believed the system because honestly, I really didn't believe that it could be possible because I'm a believer in the energy. You feel, you touch, you show, you you know, this, this feeling yeah. of human thing. I really believe this is really important, but then I had to rethink things and it works it does funny totally work i actually got a chance to even teach a wedding couple people that never danced and i had to wow. show them little basic steps over, over the camera because in my mind i was in that situation i was like well that is for sure not gonna work it did it did, it did. I mean, yeah it's slower than in the studio because you know you can guide them a little uh, absolutely and through camera you can't so the process takes longer but it's still doable they like already learn like five or six different patterns and you know they're doing fine <laughs> unbelievable i believe that though it, it does take an other type of skill Yes. Because by not being able, even the showing itself, it is limited. Limited by space, limited by the angles, by the way that you see things. So then you have to be able to word things in the right way that it, it is, speaks to a person strongly that they can understand what you're talking about. So yeah. I have a question because you're in Hong Kong, which is halfway around the world from where we are. Um, I've lived out there in what, 2004? You How did? I have no I idea. I did. Wow. I did oh, that awesome. thing. So how, how is it out there right now? What's going on? Like, um, you Do you guys, guys like have an home? option of peep? Huh? Do you have an option of go going peep? Of course. Beep. Uh, say what you feel. It's just us. Okay. It's it's going on YouTube, so <laughs> oh, so no peeping. Um, then what are you comfortable with? <laughs> honestly, at this moment, it's not the best because um, they call it the third wave. I didn't catch the first two because we were at home in London, and. Um, 
when we came here, we had to do the whole quarantine of 14 days and we stick to all the rules. It was tough, but we did it. And uh, we came out after two weeks that we came out from the quarantine, they, they started to, uh, to have the cases that has been starting to grow. And of course, comparing to US, from what I hear, US going thousands of cases per day, here they have a hundred cases per day, but this is the highest they had over the whole period of time of uh, this pandemic. And so now pretty much everything is closed. Uh, all the dance studios are closed. The restaurants are closed from 6 p.m. Um, I wanted to do my nails. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we, can, we can relate. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, in London, I managed to order on Amazon the, um, the whole set of the nails and I managed to do my nails myself the right. whole time. So that was okay because I'm kind of handy like this. You know, right. I, I got the acrylic, the gel, the, the machines, everything, and I just dealt with it for four months. Here, I'm so used to because, uh, Babette, you probably know, Hong Kong is the epitome of efficiency. Yes. Anything, anytime, you just name it, you get it. So nails is like the last thing you worry. You just have an hour between one thing and another thing. You just pop in, they do it, and you're out. It's closed. Everything <laughs> is closed. I went in the drama state. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, oh, my God, how do I deal with it? I know, of course, it sounds a bit shallow, of course with everything that's going on now in the world it feels shallow to just complain about the nails but you know it's your Let's day we can all relate. <laughs> it's your, i think it's your what you're taking for granted it's just a little bit more of that rug that's put away on an, uh, underneath all of our feet you know all of us had um we're used to a certain way of life and it's not happening right now and sometimes every little detail shows up bigger than it usually would so that's understandable. So you you just mentioned that you left home from England and went to Hong Kong. Are you guys by coastal or you primarily live in England? Where is your home? By continental. <laughs> by continental, yes. Yeah. Sorry. This is how long do we have? We have like all together forty minutes, another half an hour. <laughs> so I'll try to go very fast. Honestly, we are relocating to London. We have um, managed to get an apartment there a year ago. And um, because, of course, we've been traveling quite a few places during our career. And um, it's hard. It's hard to choose a place where you really want to settle down. Because every place in the world offers you something. Mm -hmm. right. And at the same time, Ferdinando is Italian. So he has his own values and things that he would like to have around him while he lives. I have my own values by being Russian. And so to combine it is pretty much impossible. And uh, cutting the story, story short, um, we just thought that the, main, the most um, reasonable for us was London. Because it's kind of in the middle of everything it's close to his parents, it's close to my parents. It's close to Asia, in a way, because it's only a nine hours flight. It's right. close to America, let's say, if I want to travel to US to, to do stuff there. So this was our decision actually a year ago, a year and a half ago. And yeah, we are slowly moving. Obviously the pandemic stopped and slowed right. down the whole moving thing. So yeah. So now it's England, woohoo. <laughs> Who knows in five years, right? <laughs> well, you never know, you know? I thought I'd never leave Florida and here I'm in Los Angeles. Ooh. And I like it. Yeah. You, see, you never know. But you see with London, I have a sort of a love affair. Mm -hmm. I, this was my first country that I lived in since I left Russia. And I studied there, I went to college there, I have friends there since I was, let's say, teenager. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have always had a soft heart for London. I um, mean, all of us in a way had, because 
you know, my, when I grew up dancing, London was always the place to be. I also lived there. Um, you know, I was at Assembly Studio for a long time. And, you know, when that went down, my heart was breaking, even so I haven't lived over there or been over there in a very long time. But, um, you know, I, I think London is still, for us dancers, a very special place. I actually yes. have to visit again. I haven't been there in forever. So, well, yeah, you I'll must... tell you one thing. The first British competition going on, please come and visit. It's I time. I should. I really should. I I've not been, to tell you the truth, in Blackpool since I stopped dancing with Max. And that's been, what, 17 years? <laughs> 15 years ago, I mean, it's like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> come on, you have to do it. <laughs> sure, let's make a trip. Let's plan right. it. Right. I but talk, I actually about talk about it. You know what it is. You know yeah, how special of course, this place is. Of course. Maybe after pandemic, finally, I'll make myself go. I actually <laughs> wanted to go to Blackpool this year. That was actually my goal. It just was. Cross. I wanted to go to judge rhythm because now that's a category, but so far that didn't happen. But talking about Blackpool, this is actually where I first, my, my first memory of you dancing with Mark. So I'm assuming that's why you moved to England when you started dancing with him. Yes, yes, exactly but that. I, I remember you before that because you always had a streak in your hair. I remember that. I was a pro. Oh my you God. In How do you do or something. that? <laughs> I thought it was just something I was like, whoa, that girl has a streak in her. And you were good. You were always good. And um, I heard that, I think your partner was Valentin Voronov. Voronov. Yes. Oh I my God. Yes. He was I just a guy. About that. I know, but you, yeah. you had that streak in your hair. And I remember yeah. that. And then I remember, oh, the girl with the streak is now dancing with Mark. So that was fine. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right, Babette. I totally yeah. forgot about that part. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, I was dancing with Valentin. All of a sudden, from being pretty much this, we went to kind of, hello, how, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, the life changed and I moved to London. Actually, I did it really on purpose to dance with Mark Vallas. Mm -hmm. We had a great experience. He went on his own path by being a musician, obviously, as you know, musician and dancing with the stars, superstar. Right. And, you know, and I went on with Ferdi. Right, so. and winning everything. It all worked out. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, you just literally just turned pros and just did one competition and then it went... <laughs> Like, so, but how did it feel to dance pros? Because you guys won for so many years in amateurs. Like, I think, like, what, three years in a row? It's almost like a record. Yeah. Uh, and, and now you're finally doing pros. How, how did it feel? I know it stopped, but. <laughs> to be honest, as a preparation itself, it felt exactly the same as we were amateur. Because... Honestly, I personally believe there's not such a big difference between how you train and how much dedication you put into your, your work, your dance, while you're an amateur, a truly dedicated amateur, let's put it this way, and you are professional. I never felt like there was a huge difference, let's say, as much as I practiced as an amateur, as much as I exercised, as much as I had research and doubts and everything that comes the whole baggage it came along towards the professional division of course one thing you never know is how you fit in in the energy level because of course you probably as a judges both of you 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 probably feel the different energy the energy of the amateurs that is about to kind of strike and the professional that is a little bit more about creating and the artistry and everything like this. So we didn't really know how we're going to fit in. And I tell you one thing, especially, of course, the first two rounds, it didn't feel like any different competition. It was just like eight o'clock in the morning, just go for it. But the minute that the stars came in, it felt like we were home. It 
felt <laughs> nothing different because honestly, all those top 12, um, even Stefano himself, of course, with a different partner, but we have competed in the same category by being amateurs. Of course, not being first, but that, that, that little, um, I don't know, troop, they move right. slightly. It's like somebody falls off, somebody goes a bit higher, somebody goes a bit lower. But that troop has been going, you know, Trolls, Anina, Kirill, all those guys, we've been competing with them forever. So it felt like, well, hello again. We're back home, right? While. <laughs> so it, on the energy level, it felt good. Mm -hmm. Of course, I would love to have been challenging straight away in Blackpool, you know, because the first one, you kind of testing the ground, you feeling yourself. I tried the new hair. I tried the new dress. I wasn't super excited about that at the end, but Anyway, you know, the, this whole process of experience the first time, you're very fresh. So we've done that and I was like, okay, so I felt it. I know what I want to go for. And tam -ta -ra -tam -tam -ta -ta. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And there comes the pandemic and everything is canceled and, you know, yeah, but in a way, I guess it's, uh, it, it gives another new start. You never know what's going to happen, how long it's going to last, and when everybody's going to come back to a competition. You know, I guess would really see, did these people still train, or did they eat a lot of donuts, or what, what happened? <laughs> it, it'd be interesting, because everybody would come back from, like, basically not be able to do things, and... and, and yeah, I would be very curious, <laughs> but right now with all the waves, we have no idea when is that going to be happening. Honestly, I tell you one thing, up until the time that they have announced that Blackpool has been canceled because they has been postponing it, Right. there was really, for myself, for Ferdi, there was really no problem whatsoever. Like it was so actually inspiring because honestly, you probably heard it many times already, but we have been given the gift of time. Right. For real. Because you know how hard it is as a professional, amateur professional or professional professional to be able to create something new or something really huge drastic change from what you have been doing on the competition before a major competition now we never had time before show competition teaching travel show competition teaching travel those three hours a day that you dedicate to dancing you think okay let's fix the things that don't work let's make it right. work let's make it functional so honestly after about two weeks into pandemic, let's say, worldwide, we actually stand in front of each other and we're like, you know what? Let's talk about it, actually. What do we want? And this we was really it, refreshing. Right? Yeah, it was really refreshing. What do you think about it? What do I think about it? I don't know if we have found the right solution yet or if we have hugely improved but actually that process of creativity research and actually you know all the information that we had in the past did we really use it did we really dig deep into it i'm not sure i don't know in some ways yes in some ways no so that time is precious no, I 100% agree with you. You don't think about a lot of things until you actually retire. So, and, and then when you talk to a lot of judges and Babette could totally relate to it, people and then and your coaches, they like, if I knew what I knew when, when, now, and they're not dancing because you have more time to process the information. And now you're looking at the people from the different distance as a judge. My biggest realization was, when we practice, and especially if you had some disagreement about something, we, we put so much time and effort into it. But when you watch people compete and you actually have to judge them, those little things, nobody cares. 
Like it's it's more about this bigger picture of yes, your question was very good. What are you doing? How are you gonna present that? Not whether you point your toe 30 degrees or 37 degrees, literally nobody cares. Like you judge and you go, okay, I like it, but I don't like it. And if I don't like it, they go, why? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, if I but do deeper, yes. I agree and disagree with you because let's say the big picture, I think was more in there by being a competitor and by being the champion so many years the big picture was pretty much there it's the little things that you never have time for it's those one half of a degree or a little bit extra tension a little bit more weight those little things you never have time never notice those little details because you know what I want it big, I want it strong, then I want it soft, then I want it fast. But then where is the detail? It's never have time to go into those details. You know what I noticed? And this is what I enjoy. You know what I noticed when I started judging? Um, you know, you stand there, I mean, in America, competitions take a long time. They don't just go for one evening or one day. You literally stand there sometimes for a week and you get through all levels. You get through... Um, all age classes, all levels, until to the top pros, from the very beginners, from the very mm -hmm. youngsters to, uh, to, to people who are very advanced in life. And, you sh and some of these um, contests are very, uh, you know, you have, you have to look because uh, there's a lot of people on the floor, there's a lot of things going on, and sometimes you just have time to watch because there's not so much competition at the time. So what I usually do, I stand there, and I'm, I'm trying to imagine if I was, um, let's say I, I, I see something is off. I would analyze why every single time. And I do that now for years and years and years and years. I would say, okay, if these two people would stand in front of me with big eyes and take a lesson, what, why could they be better? What is the initial thing? And it's usually not what's obvious. It's usually somewhere complete else. And also what I feel it always has to do or a lot of times has a lot to do with the connection, you know? So uh, for me, the, the judging was one of the biggest teachers in life. Like I, I feel I developed like exponentially from what I was able to develop when dancing myself, where everything was still a little bit shaky in my head because like, I'm like, let's try it like this way. It's like, how does it work with me? Once I am a very visual person, once I was able to see and to analyze what I saw, my God, you know, the whole world <laughs> changed. So it's, it's, I feel, you know, those little details do make a, 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 a big difference. However, when you look in, you have to be quick. You have to follow your instinct. You have to trust yourself that you know enough to make that decision. Right. But don't you feel that it's very personal? Oh yeah, hundred Of course it is. Yeah. In a way, let's say, for example, I, I have this, whatever you call it, philosophy, theory, idea. Mm -hmm. I was judging one time in my life, mm -hmm. one time, because mm -hmm. I have been one time professional dancer. So mm -hmm. there you go. I've judged one time. Mm -hmm. And for me, really, I'm a Russian person. I'm a very structural, as I just said, for me, those little one quarter of a turn and just a little bit extra it's like a whole big world but when i judged the first thing was actually touching me is the energy the energy the sense the feeling the minute that i feel that a person is kind of free in their mind and they give that just i don't know what it is the it Thing, the cherry on I don't know however you call that it is, X factor. that is kind Maybe of just exactly like okay I, I don't care about those feet exactly I come back probably to what you're saying Lena right <laughs> yeah I mean, we obviously assuming, and I'm talking about, if I'm talking about higher level, your feet are already in the right place. Your body motion is already in the right place. I understand you want to improve that little teeny quarter to feel more satisfied as a dancer. But for me, as a judge, if there is no feeling, if there yeah. is no 
oh, I own it, or I'm going to show it to you, then I really don't care. That's, that's what I was trying to say. So No, absolutely. I get you. That's I'm, why while, while the bet was talking, I was going through my mind what I, I actually meant to say this. But I have the link between two. Mm -hmm. I feel like this. I will go for a run. I will do my hypertrophy, speedy exercise, strength exercise, all the stuff, the rounds, the precision, everything. You know why I would do it? Not because I want a perfect body or because I want to be stronger than anybody. I want a freedom in my mind. I feel that the body that is um, very much in charge that your body is there to be ready to be your instrument, this is the thing that I feel. So all those little details, the little rotation, the little connections, the little, you know, the press-ups, the sit-ups, everything that you do, it just gives your mind a little opening space. Okay, my body's good. My part is good. Now, what no, I want to do this. I completely agree with you, especially as a female. I don't know how it goes in man's brain, but for the female, I always said, I feel the most comfortable and the most creative when I know exactly what I'm doing. And then I can improvise. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Like, so, if your body isn't ready, you just have another obstacle. So, right. And you might want to make a friend with your body because I also see a yeah. lot of dancers are all, always like, you know, like pushing yourself in a way that I said, like, you're not really working with your body. That's like you're torturing yourself. Like work with your body, but make sure your body works with you to get to that level that you need it so you both can perform together. <laughs> all right. So we only have 10 minutes left. And usually what we do with our guests, we do kind of a fun quiz. It's 10 questions that you kind of have to answer whatever comes into your head first Don't right overthink right okay so that you're gonna do it i can do it i'm ready do it go all right so this is gonna be quick answers whatever pops in the head first what is your favorite body part hips describe yourself in three words crazy loyal and reliable what drives you absolutely crazy? Unfairness. When things are not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it too. What is your useless talent? My useless talent. I make every talent as a use. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very useful talent. Work. Okay, what about hidden talent? Do you have any hidden talents that we don't know about? I am very good at drawing, and I would love to research on that more. Cool. What do I you have do this with? talent. I just don't know how to, but if I have to copy and redraw, I actually can follow. What, but what? oils, <laughs> acrylics, what, what do you paint with? Uh, I tried oil, but I don't know how to use it. You know, so it, it needs bigger research and I never actually had time. Probably if competition don't happen anytime soon, you might see some of the Monet out of me. Okay, awesome. <laughs> um, so what is your biggest kitchen screw up? Do you actually cook? I cook very well. I try to mix the Italian food because if I don't cook like Ferdi's mama, I'm gonna divorce. <laughs> I have all the recipes. I have them all. If I don't know something, I call mama. I'm like, mama, what are we doing? Um, I try to mix a bit Russian food into it and I try to keep it as healthy as possible because you know how Russian and Italian food is. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. <laughs> My biggest screw up, uh, it's actually usually time management. You know, when you try to cook few things at the same time, I always get messed up. Let's say the potatoes get cold. By the time you want them hot, they get cold and the fish is just ready. So this time schedule, I'm still not good at that. <laughs> On a scale from 1 to 10, how strict were your parents? Uh, 9. 
Nine. Okay. If you could time travel, in which era would you go? Oh, this is a good question. I would go... Actually, to be honest, I would go to each um, century. I'm really a nerd on this. I love all the history, so I would love the whole... I would love to follow the whole Roman of uh, dynasty, just one by one, just to see how the Russia develops. Uh, anyway, so Roman, Roman of this dynasty, that's so it. So you would, you would get yeah. some time miles. You would rack up miles with the time traveling. Okay, so that's <laughs> exciting. What's your best childhood memory? My best childhood memory... Well, this is going to sound a bit strange in English because it's very Russian thing. It's walking from Dacha to the city home, you know, like that. <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't explain this. You have to be a Russian to get this because we have <laughs> most of the people in Russia, if, if you're okay in life, you have a, an apartment in the city and then you have a Dacha. So my grandmother used to have a dacha, which is called agarot. It's basically your orkshire. Is that what you call it? Agarot? Menopo I guess that's where it would pit, pit, like a uh, vegetable. Where you grow and vegetables yeah, exactly. and, and things, and you have a Martin. small, tiny yeah. thing where you can sleep over. So from that place where you spend the whole day and you pick the berries and you go into the lake and you, you're tired and you still have to walk six, seven, eight, ten kilometers to your apartment because you just don't want to stay in the bus. And that walk while you sing the songs and, you know, with your family and that, that is my favorite one. <laughs> what is the best piece of advice you ever got? Actually, it was not a piece of advice. It was an observation. Mm -hmm. An observation from one of our teachers. Uh, we won for the very first time. And if you know a little bit our difficult path as an amateur, we went final, semi-final, semi-final, final, and then the fifth, six, six, four, three, four, two, one, one, two, two. So we went all around. But the first time that we truly won, we met our teacher and he said to us, he said to us, guys, congratulations. And I just want to give you an advice that you shouldn't worry about other people because to be first is the loneliest place in the, in the whole competition. And I, I, I didn't think that it was true, but it actually is true. Because while you are so-called an underdog, while you are the third or the second, you're right there, you're striving for this first place. You're right there, two marks, three marks, whatever it is. It gives other people a feel that, come on, I always sing the song from, I think it's Rocky. Pam, 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 pam. <laughs> yeah, so by the time you're set, you feel that everybody around is buzzing and they like, come on, you're going to make it, you're going to do it. And the minute you become first, it's almost like, yeah, well done, congrats. And <laughs> it, just, it just feels like, and the fact that he actually said it, it felt like it's normality, it's humanity, it's, it's just normal. So it, it was actually the best advice in a way. As an observation and their own experience, it was the best advice. And that's what kept us going to stay on the first place. Because to win one time is one thing, but to keep it a few times, it's... It's harder for sure. Mm. You have to work on it. <laughs> so if you could shop for free at a store, which one would you pick? Free store. Uh-huh. Can I put two? <laughs> <laughs> nope. You're going to suffer with one. <laughs> it's a dilemma. Christian Labatin. Which one? Christian Labatin. 
Oh, Dude. Okay. oh nice. wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can share that with you. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still have my shoe closet. All my shoes are still in the boxes and they're very high up in the closet because I had a dog. He's not, no longer here. Um, uh, but he had a very expensive taste in shoes. His name was Max. It's a Cocker Spaniel. So he ate a brand new pair of Prada shoes. Oh my God. It's like the worst thing anybody ever did to me. He ate my Prada <laughs> shoes. Yep. Mm -hmm. How hard it was for you to, to just... Oh, I mean, I love that dog so much, but I'm like, you are as close <laughs> to death as you can get right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I see you. I actually yeah. felt it. And since then, that dog is no longer here. And my little one right now, Stella, she she won't harm her shoe, or she couldn't even harm her shoe, or whatever. But still, my these <laughs> shoes go in the box high up in the closet. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's their new place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're coming to the end of yeah. our chat yeah. already. Time flies. So I know, I know, I know. I know. Always fun. I know. So um, thank you so much for being here. Um, last time you got up for us, this time we got up for you. So <laughs> we're trying to make this clear. I hope that everything is gonna kind of even out soon, so we can all get back to what we love to do and see each other again in person. But in the meantime, stay safe in Hong Kong. And um, yeah, I hope to see you sometime soon. Thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me for the lecture. It was fun. I love to share. I love to be, you know, grouping up people. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love to, this interview. It felt very relaxing and very honest and very humble. I love that. We so thank like you so much. Fun. Thank you, Yuchik, and we'll send you the link once it's out so you can share. Bye. bye. That's great. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Mm -hmm.